it's going up. Abomination! Hello! Hello, we everyone! Are, uh, abominations and penguin beaks. That's the two things we do here. Do you have, like, an abominable um, penguin? Do you think we'd ever be able to pull that off? <laughs> Isn't that, that just cool. called the Yeti? <laughs> Man, you know what? I don't, I don't know what kind of yetis they have in Portugal, but uh, no, Pedro, no. <laughs> the yeti in it, Portugal, literally translated, is the abominable snowman. So, yeah. <laughs> raises more questions than it answers, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of the use me penguin, the use me yeti? I don't know. Maybe we could just have like a penguin with the uh, hair growth control. Like, you know how, how they have like the curly, fuzzy cows? Yeah. <laughs> yaks. Delicious, delicious yaks. Yes. <laughs> yak, 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 yak. What's going on, everyone? We are, uh, I promise, we're getting ready for a weekly daily Wednesday. Yeah. It's going to be a thing that we do. Not the first time. Yes, yeah. We've done this once or twice. Um, Allegedly. Uh, I think once or 200 times, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> and I will be right back. Take care of business right now. <laughs> Yay. Go on then. <laughs> <laughs> Since I'm the slowest. <laughs> Take more time. Come on. <laughs> Stop transport. All right. Uh, hey, everyone. The abominable snowman. <laughs> So I don't have a Mackie control map for the X Touch one, so I'm just using the um, X Touch non-compat Mackie map in Audur, which I didn't expect it to work. The only reason this thing's mm -hmm. plugged in because I slid. I was like, I wonder if that was it. And I was like, ah. Huh. Then I restarted Audur at Segfault. It was like progress. Um, Ooh, it sees it. <laughs> then I started Audur again, and it stayed open, but. Then I don't. I think what I have to do because the X Touch One MC map is in like Ador Six Pre. I think I can yank it out of that and just move mm, it over to okay. Ador Five. Mm. But then again, I have the X Touch One plugged into the X Touch Compat through the USB hub. I, I, I had genuinely ten minutes to play with it before I called you guys. All right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I had no idea what. I got the function keys program, so I, that was like the big thing. I, I, I need two buttons and a dial on this thing. <laughs> That's where I'm at. That. Yeah. That's a lot better than Mr. Mackey, which yeah. consumed the entirety of this side of the desk. Look, I can put things down again. It's weird. <laughs> I got so much room that I could celebrate Christmas on the side of the desk. <laughs> we got that new uh, to record. Discord needs. Wait, nope, that's a Pedro. Um, Let's see, when is the uh, M Box 2 arriving? In between the 11th and the 14th. Hmm. Estimated delivery. Although this is Easter weekend so maybe not <laughs> maybe only on the 14th <laughs> like suck out the surprise just plug it in yeah. nah. <laughs> doop, doop. oh well there all right i'm not gonna be a dick um when you first plug it in it probably takes it about 10 seconds to power on okay just a heads up because it does the um it doesn't have external power, but mm -hmm. it also can provide phantom power. Mm -hmm. So it's got a charge. One of the caps okay. in there to have that stored. And so, like, you plug it in, like, oh no, power lights not come. Then I unplugged it, plugged it in, and it's like, no. Uh, then then I plugged it in, it's like, fine. And I went to get up to go just like swap out USB, and then it came on, and I was like, oh. I thought about it for a second. I was like, yeah, it makes sense. All right. Big capacitors that it's charging then. <laughs> well, it's got to do 48 volts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
But if you are listening to the sound of my voice, I think what we're going to do Friday, since we're out of... Um, Freeman's. Freeman's is revisit Return to Castle Wolfenstein. Coop. Oh. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I'll have to set that up then. Because <laughs> that's completely done. We can power our way through that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And it's easy to set up. I'm going to do a little video tomorrow and like setting it up in 2020 as opposed to like the original one. I had a good moment on um, YouTube comments, adventures in YouTube. Yeah, we're playing that tomorrow, buddy. You're at home. You're self-isolating. You're hissing at walls. So come on and join us. <laughs> That'll be three o'clock Friday for you. And... um. Like, oddly enough, we're going to be talking about this. This is when I found it. It was on one of the videos I did for installing DaVinci Resolve, right? Mm hmm And somebody wrote, I didn't tune in to hear your voice. Why is everything so tiny? Make it bigger. Look at the screen. I'm like, what? Full screen. I'm like, oh, oh no. You must be trying to do that on a laptop screen. I bet that sucks. Which, um... <laughs> I did have to roll around back to and I was like, it would be a shame if I had written a guide for it and linked it in the description. That was a good feel, period. <laughs> no, what did I type exactly? Um, I should make a guide and link to it into the description, period. Or I should have made a guide mm -hmm. and link to it in the description. There we go. There we go. <laughs> and of course, you never got a reply back. <laughs> oh, no, because... <laughs> There's a guide that goes to looks in castle like a complete breakdown of every step. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that felt good. Not gonna lie, that felt pretty good. There's no comeback to that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, someone just called me out for being a dummy. Mm. Yeah, that's my job nowadays. It's like people work from home and I thought it, it was when people went to the office that their IQ dropped because they were in unfamiliar territory and they were really nervous. That's why they were being so stupid. No, they're even dumber when they're at home. <laughs> uh. It's like I am required to uh I, I require this bit of software to do my job. It's like uh are you sure about that? Because I'm the one who would have to install that software, and no communications came down that HE would be using that software. Hmm. Oh, boy. Crickets. And then I get an email yeah. from my boss. It's like, did you tell this person this? Yes. Good. <laughs> <laughs> so someone went above me to complain about me <laughs> and immediately got shot down again. It's like... Good. All right. Call closed. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> hey, man. You you got to appreciate the other person's hustle, though, right? <laughs> oh. try. There's awesome, a Libra sense Crest. of entitlement. <laughs> Don't you know who yeah. I am? Yeah, it says it right mm -hmm. here on the screen. Oh. And you're asking me for help. I need to pee. I'll be back. Yeah. Kind of close. Yeah. Awesome Libra Quest. Yeah, I'm so happy you got the 5700 XT. Awesome. Yeah, he said he got it up and running on the latest kernel. Oh, yeah. So I was happy to hear that. And and I know a lot of people who have. 5600 XT. Oh, 5600. It's not about the card. It'll be interesting to see what it, NVIDIA rolls out. Like, because they're like, we're going to make the series announcement with their three series, whatever you want to call it, you know. Yeah. Super dupers. I don't know. And I want to mm -hmm. see what the next generation Navi has. Yeah, that'll be cool. It has to, like, whatever MD's rolling out, like, the low end needs to be able to compete. And I know this sounds like a tall order, but I mean, it's got to be able to compete with at least the 2080 Ti. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Because that card's what? Almost three years old now. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
of everything. Reasonably tight show for everyone today. We got, we're going to be cutting an mm -hmm. interview. I think that's the last one, isn't it? Yeah. We're going to cut that yes, in. Yes, yes. We're going to be talking about the wonderful joys of something that's open source-ish in KDE. Yeah, yes. <laughs> and Firefox. Where is my cursor? Uh-oh. I hate that. I always have to make my cursor huge. <laughs> I use, I sometimes even make my own custom cursor icon. Uh... Oh, right. I'm an Amazon influencer. Stay away. Uh... <laughs> Amazon wants me to take a survey. I'm sorry, any company. If you're offering, offering, if you're asking someone to do a survey, back that up with some money or something because I'm not taking the time to do it. Yeah. Doc, I think half the stuff I play that doesn't have like crunchy guitar behind it and it sounds like anime music to you. I'm guessing that's out of me, right? Yeah, <laughs> it sure is. Or is it some type of like... <laughs> Nope, it's not. So it sure isn't. Well, uh, uh, Nemo, do you mean the the music on the Tamagotchis and those devices? I know I've heard the term. Is that an I just anime? Can't... <laughs> I don't know. You see, what I'm going to do is he said I'm, no. I'm going to put it into Google. <laughs> It's an American band from New York City. Obviously. Oh, people. oh okay. Obviously. <laughs> so there we go. There we go to Chrisney. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking of Tamagotchi music. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, let me go grab some drinks and we're going to get into this. Okay. All right. Leave request. Kudos. Yeah, isn't that great? We were just talking to him about it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, you kind of need the, um... If you're expecting to use any of the Navi cards. Latest Colonel, latest Mesa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mesa... At least 19.3, and Colonel at least 5.3. I think. <laughs> Thank you, DeKresny. I knew I knew that name from somewhere, because I listen to a lot of chip tunes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to save that link. I'm sure I've probably heard something by them. Air Online. Cool. Yeah, I've gone to some chiptune festivals like way back when when it when it first started uh -huh. ah yeah good choice <laughs> 1600. Uh, surprisingly well the if you got the 1600 G. the 1600 af sure the 2200G, oh, yeah, you're uh, about two cores, uh, you have two cores less uh, than the 1600, yeah. and the clock isn't all that, um, well, it's basically the same as the original 1600. So, yeah, no, okay, yeah. The 1600 AF is great, it's like a 2600, but cheaper, mm. <laughs> with a lower turbo. Nice. Um, they won't OC a lot, Leave requests. It's, uh, all of the Ryzen, uh, CPUs have that thing. It's like, they all, um, mm -hmm. turbo up to as high as they possibly can, according to the cooler that you have on it. So, unless ah, you're using yeah. the stock teeny, teeny, tiny cooler, you should be fine. <laughs> what are we talking about? 
He's got a water cooler, he said. Cool. Oh, it's on water. Then, yeah, you probably are already boosting as high as that particular chip will go. <laughs> the uh, turbo boost on the Ryzen CPUs? Um... Hmm... Yeah. Well, I mean, it really depends on what type of... I mean, if you have, like, a AIO... Mm-hmm. Is, that's mm -hmm. pretty much... Uh, they're going to trade blows with a high-end air cooler. That's the reason I ended up with the... um. You make that? Noctua? Yeah. Yep. The NH14. S-U... Yeah. Slash... <laughs> U.S. something. Yeah. We're the only one making a full block... <laughs> Red Ripper cooler at the moment, mm -hmm. so you're gonna buy it from us. Deal with it. Ha ha ha. LOL. <laughs> I don't know if that was the exact model number, but that's what it felt like when I wrote the check for it. <laughs> no, the NH14s and the NH15s are pricey, but even the NH12s, which are basically the same size as like the Arctic uh, 34 and the um, Hyper 212 Evo, they somehow managed to cool a heck of a lot more. Jack I don't Bucks. know how they do it, but they do it. <laughs> Jackbox still has the Hyper 212 Evo. Uh, that thing, that, that, that's an heirloom. Give that, like, this was your mm. father's 212 and your father's before him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> using the Hyper 212 on the uh, 3700X? Yeah, we have that same setup. We bought that clip that makes it go the wrong direction. And, uh, yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, it's just like five pounds on eBay or something. He's like, um, oh, mm. this only fits like this. Mm -hmm. All right. Fan pointing down it is. <laughs> Mine points up because it got the holes in the case at the top. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, that works. Plus, it's a 65 watt part, too. It doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, the, it, the fan is like uh, very close to the GPU, but it's pulling air up and out, which is also why I put one of those uh, 12 millimeter filters on the uh, back fan uh, mount, turn the fan around, and it's all positive pressure mm. from the sides and uh, pulling air out from the top. Yeah, I have just like a clean channel with the um, with that Noctua because of the giant size of it. Yeah. The thread rip, it, they, they touch. In the first slot. Yeah. <laughs> so it just channels it like directly to the yep. fan in the back. It's a good thing it has a back plate on it. See you request. Yeah. Oh. Have fun, Libra Quest. Have fun with your new uh, gaming setup. <laughs> oh, and enjoy and your kids. Starting <laughs> to get warm, so I don't know if everyone else it must be. It hit do. twenty Celsius here today. I had to reset my fan curves. Yeah. <laughs> mm. What I noticed, there's no like central heat or the AC. If it's just neutral in the house, and I check on this box if I'm not doing anything on it, and I'm in here. Once it gets up to 40 at idle, I'm like, yeah, yeah I need to cut the fans back on. <laughs> As opposed to a you know at full wheeze they spin, but yeah, yeah. I mean they're 120 millimeter fans. They don't make noise. Air gets loud. Yeah, airflow. <laughs> yeah, uh, after <laughs> basically testing the noise of all the fans when I put the the last set of 140 millimeter fans on this case, mm -hmm. it's like I want 140 millimeter fans everywhere now. It's like no noise whatsoever, and you can feel the air pressure even when they're just spinning at the lowest possible speed. It's like yeah, <laughs> they're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I think these... Are these 140s or 120s? The NH4 are 140. Okay, so everything in the case is one. My bad. Two 140s in the front, <laughs> 140 in the back, and two on the uh, Noctua, which you only gave me one fan, bros. <laughs> that was another, like... <laughs> oh, by the way, you gotta buy another. You better follow the instructions on that second fan, or you're gonna spend, like, two hours going, <laughs> what did I do wrong? Why is it making uh... this god-awful sound? Oh yeah, people are desperate to get out of the house now that the temperature is coming up. In Portugal, uh, a lot of people who are supposed to, you know, be in lockdown because 
the government mandated a lockdown pretty early on. And they all decided, you know what, let's go on vacation to the south of the country, to the Algarve. And the police was like, oh really? <laughs> Everyone pulled over to the side of the road, fines going left and right for speeding, for driving without license, for driving under the influence. Oh boy. Uh, yeah. So it's just like a regular day. It was very, it was a very productive couple of days. Because <laughs> when people were supposed to be home, it's like, no, 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 we're gonna go to the Algarve and uh, be tourists. So much longer <laughs> does your dad have until he retires? He's already retired. Oh, okay. <laughs> he had military service, so he got like a bunch of time uh, taken off of his um, mm. pension requirements. Ah, get it. So, yeah. <laughs> Discord, fix the thing where it scrolls. Yeah, <laughs> it's been annoying. <laughs> I think uh, we should be. What is it? We're going to. Get to, um, you know, do this thing. Okay. <laughs> get some new compressors going in. Got new hardware I'm playing with today. So if everything catches on fire, dies and all that, uh, fair warning. <laughs> also, if I disappear and get real quiet, because I'm working on something. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, that's good. That's good. That's good. It sounds like very angry Tetris. We need to get the one. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> Chip tune bullshit. That's it's exactly <laughs> what that folder is called on the box. Um. Okay. Play nice. New mm -hmm. piece of equipment. Oh. Ooh. That doesn't work. Take two. You know. <laughs> Clearly. Yeah. <laughs> hey, at least it triggered it to do the thing on Jitsi early. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, let's see. We need that about there, and that's record, so we go to F1. And I hit the right button this time, and don't blow my ears apart. Mm-hmm. And I that. have an error box on my Jitsi window there. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, it's all your fault, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't the oh, one who hit the wrong button <laughs> this time. <laughs> That's loaded. That thing is blinking correctly. So, Harry, let's get the backup on the backup recording going. And I should be able to click go on that. Click go on that. I think it's doing. I am scared to touch any other buttons on this thing right at this moment. Um. Oh, even a volume thing. Neat. We're learning things. <laughs> that gets us back. Ah, beautiful people. Let's uh have another adventure in Linux land. And welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where Hello. we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things we found going on in the world of penguins, open source, floss, and this mm -hmm. week, uh, new audio stuff, but that's me, man, this is called Tuesday around this house. Um, speaking of me, I am Vin Stone, joined <laughs> every week by Hollywood Joe, an oh. <laughs> LA with a red shirt, and the man <laughs> with no plan. But he's on an island Aww. in Britannia. There's one Pedro no, Mateus. I just make it up as I go along. That's right. the best way. <laughs> Improv comedy. That's not funny. That's what we do here. Hey, uh, everybody joining us live. What's going on? What's new? If you followed me on social media, mm -hmm. you saw a picture. I believe 
that was uh, the entirety of that day. So <laughs> I got on and apparently the flying spaghetti monster, because the plan for that day was like, oh, yes, let's go to the big box store and get some new electrical outlets for the studio. Flying Spaghetti Monster was like, you know what? I don't want you rewiring electrical stuff today, apparently, because oh. I cut everything on and uh, our thread rubber. It's like, no, I don't feel like booting, man. I'm like, what, what's going on? Uh, oh. So you go through, do you, do you have that experience where you go through, like, oh, I, I'd, I'd come to terms with, okay, the 2060 died. The, you know, <laughs> which admitted. Oh, okay. Admit, yeah. admittedly you know i cut it on and the little thread rubber boards got like error code and like b2 what moon glyph be this and it's like shrug emoji in the manual and it's like it's not the first time i ran into that thing so i saw um then i was reading online people were like ah, it's usually my video cards having an issue and so you know what i plugged in like a 980 and i just swapped that out and I'm like nope same problem i was like dang it because that's a founder's edition still under warranty. And I knew they would be at least ship me back a 2060 super. I was kind of good with that. <laughs> what it boiled down to is I could only get it to boot once I remove not one, not two, but three black magic encoders from the, um, thread ripper. <laughs> then it would boot. Then, then I started playing musical chairs on the, uh, PCI. SS, PCIe <laughs> Titanic. <laughs> yeah. And boot with that one? How about yeah. this one? What if I move the network card over here? Because they're all taken. That's why we have a thread rubber, not for the speed so much as the PCI lanes and availability of that. And um, it finally came back to life. So, yay. Now, now I'm terrified okay. to the point where I'm like, because I did have, it's like, oh, I wonder if it's power supply. I, I need to have a backup power supply for that thing because mm -hmm. you've got to have that weird uh, thing, dual EPS and all that fun stuff. Also, just keep life fun. Keep life interesting here at LGC. I run Debian testing. So, you know, cutting edge-ish. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> it's... Uh, <laughs> About as much as Ubuntu is, so... <laughs> it's yeah. kind of fun, you know? It's like, choose your own adventure. If everything's working, that's fine. But if you get bored one day, just run, you know, apt update. Look at the fresh 150, 170 packages. Like, hmm, do I want to pull the trigger on that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Last but not least, um, Pedro and I came to a very, like, oh, I guess we're at the end of our um, Black Mesa for now. Adventure, yes. yeah. <laughs> we ran into that last Friday. So I, uh, out of curiosity, I was looking for a return to Castle Wolfenstein. And I was like, how's that? Is that still run on a modern system? Of course it does. So we're going to be getting into that uh, this coming Friday. So I invite everyone to come out and Fine. play. <laughs> yes. There will be further details on that announcement. This new thing I put on Discord. This brand new invention that I had all by myself. It's called an announcements tab that I like stole because i saw it in another um discord i was like that's a good idea you know that confused me i saw that show up on discord it's like which channel is this again it's yeah like, Where's, where, did, where did lgc go it's like oh wait this is lgc we what? don't <laughs> practice that nonsense here but, yeah if uh pedro myself or jordan are doing anything stream wise will there'll be an announcement there you can always check that so mm -hmm. that's what's new with me get that out oh yeah Thing. Mm -hmm. I got the thing. See, there's a thing I got that showed up like 15 minutes before Next the end. Uh, oh, nice. <laughs> show started. That's just glowing. Your it's thing loses a point for this LED ring because that. Oh, that, yeah. <laughs> that's some nonsense that I'm not happy about. But, whoop, wrong one. See, I'm so angry I hit the wrong button. Um. <laughs> not a fan. Blinded of, with rage. Not a fan of yeah. this RGB, too. <laughs> <laughs> the ring of no. Nope. Of course it is. <laughs> of course it is. Do you know how long it's going to take to get that whited out? <laughs> Maybe I can use like a Sharpie on it. We'll find a way. I hope I don't have to yes. crack it open and cut some leads to get that done. That's what's going on. Uh, yeah, it's just an interface to go along. Uh, control surface to go along with a control surface. There will naturally be a video about it. Jill, what's new with you, man? Oh boy, besides watching lots of, uh, rewatching lots of episodes of the IT crowd with my husband, which is always a joy. Um, I just realized uh, last week mark marked my two year anniversary on LWW. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it's been that long. It's just flown by. It's It's been so wonderful being here with, with Ven and Pedro 
and this awesome community and it's just you don't need to lie to the people yeah did you pay <laughs> to say that? <laughs> no 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 it's like it's it's okay jill you don't need to lie to people it's fine oh no oh i love you guys you guys are my family <laughs> uh, people have said worse things about me uh Pedro, what's going on with you well uh you had the issue with the thread booper not boop well, not booping. Oh, yeah. Uh, I posted and... that in Discord. You're like, it's been one of those days, mm. Francis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and <laughs> because while, you know, working from home and whatnot, and I had, like, work stuff here, and I had browser and Thunder Chicken and Discord over here on the UHD monitor, mm. and all of a sudden, it goes black. Table. Uh -huh. Oh, poop. What okay, happened? Hang on, hang on. <laughs> okay, we, we got to go through all the fields because you got to... That 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 was the like nasty part with Threadripper because we've been doing this for so many decades. You have to go through the um, troubleshooting thing, so you've processed mm -hmm. in that. Yeah, boop, go, <laughs> you've got thirty things you're working on right there. You're like, okay, what could this be logically? All right, let's start with this. What was yeah. your first thought? Cable or monitor? Uh, my first thought was the monitor died. Yeah, that, mm -hmm. it's like kind oh. Like, uh, how did that happen? <laughs> so I yanked the uh, cable, put the uh, thing on the back of the monitor to the other uh, display port. Nothing. It's like, oh, no. crap. Okay. The oh. OSD is still up, so it's not, yeah. you know, power to the monitor. That's right. okay. So um, let's see. Uh, swap the um, 1080. Mm -hmm. Pull the 1080 out, put it in another PCIe slot. It's like, no, it's still doing the same thing. Oh crap! Okay, uh, let's yeah. swap the monitors around. Plug plug the UHD one to the HDMI. It's like, oh, it came on. Hmm. Oh, don't mm -hmm. tell me. So wow. I went. Yeah, I played uh, <laughs> musical chairs with the Display Ports. It's like Display Port one works just fine. Display Port two nada. Display Port three works just fine. It's like. Okay, we have a dead display port. Hmm. Neat. <laughs> now, fortunately, yeah. we do live in this wonderful future to where you're like, eh, I got another one. In fact, I got like two. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and HDMI 2.0 in the GPU as well. So, push comes to shove, I can use that. <laughs> yeah, right. As somebody who yeah, just jams up video cards myself with monitors, I'm like, uh, I've uh, never had a display port fail, though. Yeah. No, I I've, I've had one. Yeah. <laughs> dear, dear fate. This I look forward first. to my display port <laughs> failing after I said that. Yeah, man. It, I, it popped my uh, display port failure uh, cherry. <laughs> oh. I fully expected one because uh, I had to order a like a 3.5 meter display port cable that just didn't, doesn't fit. It's just too chalky enough. The video cards moved down out of the top slot. It would fit. And I was like, eh, click and get it way more force than you should apply. You know that? That, that amount of force yeah. <laughs> to get it to click in because I got tired of it coming unplugged. But yeah, it still works so good on that. Um, cool. Well, uh, not cool, but you just moved it's it. Working. Right? Yeah. yeah, it's just, working. It's, I can still do 144 hertz on the uh, 2K monitor, <laughs> and I have uh, 3840 by 2160 at 60 is, on this one. So, hey. That's what it was. You wore it out. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it ha it, that happens. <laughs> <laughs> Too many hurts. Uh, let's get into it. We've got enough playing around. Let's talk about the uh, 2004 beta that is out for public consumption that anyone can play with now. Yeah, so so the latest beta, 2004 Ubuntu LTS. Um, I've actually been having a lot of fun testing the beta release on old hardware and new hardware, but it, it's been amazing. I was amazed on how well it runs on older hardware, like a, an early 64-bit AMD uh, laptop. And before GNOME was just chugga, chugga, chugga. And now it's it's zippy. It's It runs much faster. It's more polished. And there is a new dark mode setting. Yay! We all rejoice. <laughs> <laughs> and I also like the do not disturb mode to silence annoying those annoying push notifications. And yeah, this That's was nice. a feature. I yeah. would take it outside and <laughs> so, light it on fire if I got a desktop notification. Of yeah, <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> well, fortunately, Wimpy had included included that with Ubuntu Mate, and he brought it over to Ubuntu Mate. Oh, it comes with Main. free fire. <laughs> 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 and uh, yeah, uh, so 
it's it's a really wonderful release, and I'm looking forward to also to upgrading my broadcasting rig to Ubuntu Mate 20.04 because those all the uh, other betas are out to test as well, like the Zubuntu and 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 Ubuntu Mate, and the Ubuntu Mate one is supposed to include much better high DPI support, which is great. I'm running um, 1910 right now on my broadcasting rig, and there are some issues with the high DPI, which it's hard for me because I'm low vision, <laughs> so <laughs> it's that's been an is issue. But I also just want to let everyone know uh, that Martin Wimpress and Alan Pope would love everyone to beta test and file bug reports. So, and it's very easy to do now. In fact, they've even done videos on how to do it. <laughs> so that's really yeah. Awesome. This laptop right here has been running um, Ubuntu mm -hmm. Mate for. When did the wow. alpha come out? Alpha. I, I don't actually remember, but it was several months ago, and uh, this one's been running it, and it works pretty well. Um, admittedly, I don't really poke at it too much. I just try to use it like I would a laptop. Right. And it works. It works very well. Mm -hmm. A couple of things with this. Uh, ZFS support's going to be there out of the box, which is pretty cool. Yeah. They have a note that's like, yo, if this thing fails to boot, um, if there are existing pools named B pool or R pool, so name them D pool, like a normal person, um, <laughs> on a second drive, <laughs> Snap Store is going to replace the Ubuntu software as the default tool for finding and installing packages and snaps. Mm -hmm. So, pseudo app stalls, <laughs> synaptic. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Which, yeah. to be fair, I. Yes. I I go price an app to get out of my cold live hand. Mm -hmm. Period, man. I or I'm just going to be on the command line. I only get synaptic when I I'm feeling searchy. Like, yeah, I'm not sure. Like, what I, this gotta, thing, right. I gotta I gotta mm -hmm. look for this thing. Well, so. there's that. There's there. the debate of like, <laughs> do I open synaptic and search or just go to Google? Mm, <laughs> it's usually yeah. for development. It's like, is this dash dev or lib that dash de? Uh, yeah. And if it's uh, if you go to Synaptic and you find it, you can always just tick the box there. It's like, yay, install. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, not good news, but I'm sure there's going to be a mm -hmm. lot of people on, With, on, the, uh, on the internet opinions? that's going to Yeah, they're going to be like, I told you so. <laughs> well, uh and, you know, to be fair, they have the right to do that. Uh, because mm -hmm. Olaf, uh, Olaf Schmidt Wischofer, oh. why did I put myself through that, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> uh, has a bit of a message for the KDE community. And he is a KDE person himself. And he says, it's like, okay, the QT um, ecosystem is comprised of three things. The uh, KDE community, the QT project, and the QT company. And the QT company is the one in the spotlight here because mm -hmm. you know back in january they restricted lts releases to paid subscribers only and um now they have threatened to delay the open sauceness of everything else qt related for 12 months because of the current health concerns and they uh, them wanting to maximize uh, the revenue in the short term and the kd people obviously don't want that because it means that they would have to work off of um out of date or older um versions of qt in order to build the framework necessary for kde and this comes in the heels of the negotiations that kde and the open source uh, qt community have been uh doing with the qt company for a long long time so it's Clearly, they want max profit short term, and I don't know if they realize what that's going to do in the long run, because yes, you will get more people paying for the license in the short term, but after someone forks it and does a good job of it on a recent enough version, you're not going to get any more money. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think one of the first things that... Uh... To speak to your point there, what's going to happen is the businesses are currently licensing it will continue and nothing is going to happen. Yes. But <laughs> we were talking about this for what we want live is, you know, I, 
if there's anyone, a single person at KDE, the KDE Foundation, that didn't like immediately start like really, really, really 100% for realsies, start on plan B. Once this was announced back in January, you know, the, there, there might be some issues with some leadership there because this was something that could happen. No one really thought would actually happen. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah, it's never going to be a real issue. I understand that because, you know, you want to think the best from everyone. Yes. But, you know, business is You can be naive like right. that. It's fine. <laughs> and, you know, that that's really easy for me to say, but, you know, after the fact, but I, I said the same thing back in January. I'm not like, oh, I'm right. No, that, that has nothing to do with what I'm saying right now. It's just that I don't like it when something you know when you prepare for the worst and the worst happens yeah. contingency plan there's something to be said for it uh i think we're gonna have to really seriously come back and rethink the we can't fork qt argument that is because it's such oh a, yeah no that mm. that's a monumental nightmare is yeah it is <laughs> yeah but you know uh, i think strider even is <laughs> somewhere miguel Miguel is saying, told you. Mm -hmm. you. You might know him from Gnome, but. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, Jill? You know, yeah. So thank goodness we have the, the KDE Free QT uh, Foundation and that it e exists. And this will help secure the continued existence of the open source QT, which is very important right now <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah. you better get used to that base <laughs> uh, framework and the current functionality that it gives you because it's not going to be moving anywhere in the near future we yeah. don't know and i think it's a scary <laughs> thing for everyone involved in this like no one knows what the legitimate outcome from this is going yeah. to be you know what what will take place we're just throwing stuff don't panic yet this could all get resolved but, you know, this is not fun times. I, I just remember like the big arguments on Slashdot billions of years ago when I was but a wee lad. It's like why people didn't use KDE because QT wasn't open source. Remember those days? Mm -hmm. yeah, no yes. changed. And mm -hmm. I, I, hope, I hope it gets resolved because Noom needs competition. Yes, definitely. You know, you need, mm -hmm. you need an option that has... Yes. Configuration buttons and stuff. <laughs> People like those. <laughs> yes, that actually gives you settings. <laughs> 100%. Good news, everyone. Libra Speed is a speed Yay. test. It's free. It's open source. No Flash, no Java, no WebSocket, no bull squeeze. See? But you can still <laughs> read. I can't cover that up. Uh, they got everything available on the GitHub. It's a thing. You can play with it. I mean... I don't know. I mean, I, Pedri, I think you had roughly the same experience I did. I'm like, this doesn't, this does not uh, represent my actual speed. I mean, it's done in HTML5. Mm -hmm. It's really easy to just like drop it out. I mean, it's mm -hmm. PHP node. You can do multiple servers. And uh, I think it's neat. I like it. But I think the use case is like, this is something that you would, what do we do? Download, upload, ping, jitter, IP address, telemetry. Result sharing is optional. Multiple points of test also optional. Server requires you need SQL PHP. That's it, and yeah, Apache or Nginx or what? What did you call it? Nginx? Yeah, <laughs> Nginx. Yeah, <laughs> Nginx. <laughs> that's the thing you can throw there. This maybe if you were wanting to set up a speed test between two points, but yes, yeah. on a local yeah. network or you're setting up like a network connection between two completely different places, and you need to check between the two. Mm -hmm. Yes, for actual internet connectivity speed testing no no the the, the yeah. speeds they vary a little bit too much depending on the server uh the default paris server uh for me i got 30 megs down and nine up and then i changed to the germany server and i got 198 megs down and 23 up so i'm yeah. yeah. getting like yeah. 30 or f no i got 135 from france and like the New York uh, VM, yes. I got like 30 megabits. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. the New York New York one definitely does have issues. And, you know, my idea is, is they need to set up more server locations. And that would be very helpful because I know um, I'm here in L.A. and the Las Vegas one was pretty accurate when I did the Las Vegas uh, settings. 300, I got was showing 300 megabits um, per second symmetric, which is correct. And but I did the New York one, and it was just like what happened to to Ven. It was like twenty thirty <laughs> megabits per second, and I, I'm like, well, that could be also because they're having a lot of uh, internet overload at the moment. <laughs> that could so, be. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of bandwidth, man, I have noticed uh, it, it's been holding for like two weeks now. Steam, what have you done to decongest? your Atlanta server, I'm finally getting like 550 to 580 down again. Yay. Sorry. Mm. I just went through that in. I've, I've, oh, been, stuck, nice. <laughs> I've been stuck at like 300. Ugh. Yeah. I, I've changed mine to San Diego because the LA one was uh, uh, chugging along. Oh, uh, I'm totally not using the uh, Spain slash Portugal server at all. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> man that, that, <laughs> dude that, i trust me i slapped myself on the side of that and i'm like why am i only getting 35 megs a second down like really really we're upset about this <laughs> no we're not we grew up with dialogue yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay so flatfox firefox is now available on flat hub and it's the latest version and you too can have a reuben sandwich in your lifetime and we're talking, this is quantum. This is not, what is it, ESR, the, the advanced version I have on Debian yes. stale. But <laughs> you can hook it up, man. I mean, there's not a problem there. I mean, it's your standard Firefox. You got your extensions, your themes, Yay. tracking protection. And syncing. Dude, this thing is sandbox, son. I mean. Nice. Like, <laughs> okay, so what does this have? Access? Downloads folder. What, and nope, I didn't start a downloads folder. Yeah, no, the, you have access to one folder. That's mm-hmm. it. <laughs> and uh, it's good. It's very good. Um, that's what flat packs are there for. And it's the browser, right? Chances are you already have the native version installed. But if you need a browser to run somewhere really Pedro, quickly. Pedro, what if, <laughs> what if having an application launch a little too fast scares me? <laughs> no. Well, then you can use FlatHub or oh, you can use Snaps. Neat. Or you can use, uh, well, the app images are fast enough, but uh, yeah, no, Flat Hub or Snaps. Yeah, absolutely. I will <laughs> say, I was having a little bit of argument back and forth with a friend the other day, and we were talking about this because what nerds do between, you know, it's like, do you just like the Snaps or the Flat Packs? I'm like, I don't like the only thing I have against them really is having to install another thing in order to do a thing. That's why I and think And installing I, the dependencies yeah. for yeah, the new thing. As opposed yeah. to like an app image, because <laughs> exactly. for me, for my use case, if I'm not installing it, if I if I if I'm just taking a little sample pack, give me an app image. I just need to see if it launches. Mm-hmm. I'm like, ah, oh, do I want to mess with this? Then I'll go install it. But this is there. This is good. Maybe uh, Silver Blue is going to. I, I I still want to set up a box for that and see how that flies. Which is Fedora's flat pack only. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Brave new world of braveness that nope i'm not that brave just yet (laughs) it's for workstations right if you want to control exactly the version and everything else that uh, a workstation has installed on it this is where you win me when you start talking about workstation server backend iot deployment snap flatback i'm like yes yes makes sense when you get to the desktop i'm like that that's a solution in search of a problem yeah no (laughs) <laughs> yeah but know. yeah everything and, around linux is for servers because that's where the market is linux is for <laughs> desktops you weeb <laughs> it's for both <laughs> it's microsoft enterprise <laughs> yeah i get yeah they do is that what it's called on windows enterprise or um we have enterprise yes okay yeah we used to have pro now we have enterprise <sighs> oh uh. Happy, happy Joel? thoughts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so like Ben was saying, um, I, I wish there was an officially supported uh, Firefox app image. Um, I'd been using a third-party one for a while, and it it mostly works. But it would be nice to have an officially supported one because um, uh, awesome sandboxing. 
Um, but normally I just run the Tarjot GZ uh, Firefox updates. That's that's been my go-to for years because yeah. they run even on older, you know, older distros on older computers. <laughs> It'll run. So hmm. it's always a nice thing. <laughs> a little bit of my curiously happy, optimistic news is yes yeah <laughs> the one of the things that we've i don't know i've not said that about mobile but i think i can at least agree with pedro and it's like i really want a linux tablet because mm -hmm. i want at least 10 inches make of that what you will um this this is a little smaller than that but it's a real yeah. thing yes and it is uh coming out late may 2020 Yay. it is the pine phone ub ports community edition uh, awesome. The pre-orders are now open if you'd like to uh, basically help them fund development because that's what they're doing with these pre-orders. It's like you pre-order and you help them uh, and you help fund more development around the whole PinePhone concept. And this one is using UbiPorts, which is the community... Um, they want to call it resurrection, even though I really want to call it resurrection of the um, See, that kind of makes Unity me want to buy project. It, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, it's basically they took what Canonical left behind after there was the possibility of an IPO uh, in the works, and they decided, you know what, let's not continue with that Unity thing. But part of the community really liked Unity, so that's what it is. And they've been doing a very good job, actually. A better job than Canonical ever did, in my opinion. And yeah, the UB ports phone, the, you're looking at the video. If you're looking it's at the video, it's trying to version. load YouTube. This is one of those, can you do it, little buddy? We've all had that moment Aww. with hardware. We're like, come on. <laughs> but, I'm not saying that as a negative and, way. You say it as like morbid curiosity. The first time you loaded X on like the original Raspberry Pi, you're like, can you do it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> and yeah. To be fair, the specs for the price, they are selling it for the same $150, uh, 150 that all of the other uh, editions of the Pine Phone were at least at. That's not a bad price for the specs that you're getting. What it mm -hmm. needs right now is the software, and UB ports is a possibility. There's also Plasma Mobile. There's um, a couple of Android spins uh, that are available for it. Uh, there were a couple of more not uh, other notable. Oh, ports. jellyfish! Yeah, uh, selfish OS. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. And what's really cool is uh, our very own Sandy Martin here at Linux Gamecast just ordered one, and I'm looking forward yes. to hearing his his thoughts on it because he has actually helped with the development of UB ports. So I'm really looking forward to his opinions on this. I I've been rocking it on my OnePlus One uh, for a long time and love it. <laughs> yeah, I I too am waiting for Sandy's uh, take on when he finally gets the phone, because much mm -hmm. like the Pinebook Pro, developed by the same lovely, lovely people, it's neat, but not you know one hundred and fifty dollars sight unseen neat. So, I mean, yeah. come on, man, that's impulse buy money. No, no, impulse yeah. would be like a hundred dollars. That would be yeah. No, I'm not even looking at it. Give me. 150 it's like all right i'll wait till someone i trust lets me know how it goes for for like a um a smaller project for something that uh, crowdfunding 150 bucks i'm like ah let's see because what i get but that you will actually get something versus like a lot of times like you'll put 150 something like that and it's like i might get a product at least you knew you'll get something <laughs> <laughs> yes you just might not like it all right so the last in our scale interview mm -hmm. series is a tale yeah. of a young man who likes <laughs> to wear things on his head. Oh, yes, yes. So this is this is our, our as Ben was saying, our last scale eighteen X interview um, with Nova King from Chat. He's one of our patrons as well, and he's giving us an update on his latest projects. And he's been doing some amazing things. So. This is really awesome and enjoy. Mm -hmm. That was pretty cool. So do you think like mm -hmm. his um Nova King could like his alternate personality is like crime identities like Nova Nova Kane? 
Here's like a <laughs> no, 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 no. What are you talking about? He's a dragonborn. He's... Nova King. Oh. Nova King. <laughs> oh, no. Now I want to do Nova King to that song. The dragon's all dragged out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Well, those those demos were were so cool. It was so nice. And and by the way, I'm going to thank Mr. Alert in chat for his beautiful camera work on all the Scale 18 X inter interviews. Thanks for and, doing the work, um, Alan. That was awesome. Yeah, Yo. beautiful. <laughs> amazing <laughs> okay uh we got a couple of people we got to think who fund this show they are our patrons patreon.com forward slash linux gamecast they make all of this possible and we have a new executive producer jill yay <laughs> leap request yay thank you so much you are awesome we've been enjoying having you in chat and uh this is this is wonderful I can't believe, you know, we have people that fund this, <laughs> fund our work. <laughs> <laughs> people who like what we do to the point that's like, yeah, I don't mind sharing a little bit of dosh with you. Here you that's go. one way to do it. Aww. We don't sell your data. We don't have ads anymore. This is a, an interesting yep. business experiment of we're doing freeware. We're like, hey, we're going to make it if you'd like to help out, you know, and it helps out tremendously. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. let's just do what we do and we're doing stuff like four or five days a week now no four days five days a week yeah it's five, five days yeah. a week jeez yeah yes. no it's a full work week of <laughs> linux content yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man it is fun plus we get to make some guides and instructions and stuff like that to help you linux your best that that sounds viable mm -hmm. i'd go to that school learn how to help linux your best or learn yes. to Linux your best now with 90 percent mm -hmm. less beaks <laughs> You don't want beaks. It's all penguin rump. Yeah, penguin oh. rump. Dude, that's pretty cool. Uh, think each and every one of your name is always in the credits. It's a patron. You get access to our Discord where we're hanging out the other six days of the week. That's where we party hard. We always have IRC completely free, and that's tied into our Discord so we can talk back and forth. And uh, if you like what we do, got another extra hour of content for the beautiful party patrons so you could a custom RSS feed. I made a little special thing. Mm -hmm. Patrons ordered one already. Patrons like, oh, you like that? All right, done. I posted that up <laughs> on Patreon. It is yeah. the best, according to old man me. Sub $50 interface, recording interface. Think of it as a sound card because you will use it as a sound card. And I tested it too. I'm like, don't use your interface as a sound card. You're like, oh, I can't hear you. I'm using my interface as sound cards up. Okay, fine. So I tested that too. Uh, sub $50 that I would use myself. In fact, it is plugged in behind me right now. So hmm, awesome. Think awesome about sauce. that. And you would be looking if you're looking to, you know, hey, a lot of people are stuck at home right now. And maybe you want to try this Twitch maybe thing out. Maybe you want to do the podcast thing. <laughs> you're gonna spend money and your budget's like 50 bucks because you can get this for less than fifty dollars. Go watch that video. Save yourself and get get something better quality for a lower price. I'm all about that man. Mm -hmm. Value. But um, oh, stick around for your name in the credits. That's kind of a thing. We'll talk over it. We need <laughs> to get into a slice of pie. Because yeah. um, October is right around the corner, isn't it? Yeah, I was, I was just going to say it's not October yet. <laughs> I mean, four months, yeah. <laughs> Let's be honest. It's been further away. Right? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I want to talk about this seedstudio.com i ran across one of their tweets and i'm like what's this going on because i got my little um tweet deck thing set up for it and just small board computers this ladies and gentlemen is rolls off the tongue the odyssey x86 j4105 it's a windows 10 mini pc that also supports linux operating system as opposed to linux non-operating system that's called linux nos vtech just kicked in fam uh Dude, mm -hmm. what does this thing have under the hood? Quite a it bit. It has a Celeron. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, and, uh, it's a dual Wait, gigabit. core of 1.5 gigahertz. Celeron. It's not the dual gigabit that I was like, oh, well, that's interesting. Dual Intel gigabit. Mm -hmm. It's like, ooh, now you have my attention. And yeah. mm -hmm. these things, are, oh, they got a little case for it too. We can't get them yet. They're sold out. Or they haven't shipped out like fourteen ninety for the case. What's the full price deal going to cost me on this one, Pedro? Uh, the full price is, um, I don't remember actually. <laughs> what we're looking at for the most of you listening on audio, you we get two regular USB, you get a USB 3.0, you get HDMI, you get two M.2, so you get the B key and the regular M.2 key. 
and it supports 4G cellular. So it's got a spot for a SIM card. It's got your standard nine uh, barrel, you know, nine volt barrel adapter. I'm sure it's more nine volts. USB-C, you can also power it through that. It comes with eight gigs of RAM, I believe. Yeah. And uh, yes. There's an and option it's... for 64 gig of onboard eMMC. Mm. It also has SATA connectors. Mm-hmm. So this is... Under- it, it is very much a computer. <laughs> And it's pie yeah. size. When I say pie size, it's got a, the bottom is just a solid slab of aluminium with a fan on it, but it's not terribly thick. This is this is like uh, this is a pie after like Thanksgiving dinner or Christmas yeah. dinner. And it's, it's around two hundred dollars. I think the yeah. full bore loaded yeah. one's like two eighty eight. Yeah. Uh, two, with, no, with, it's one eighty eight oh. without EMMC and mm-hmm. two hundred and eighteen with, with the EMMC. Okay, module. but and then the, if the, you want Windows, right? There's like the enterprise <laughs> <Yeah>. activated. <laughs> <Yeah. version. laughs> so I am I'm super interested in this because I'm legitimately curious what I can make out of one of these. I want to see if yeah. I can make like a turnkey Jackbox audio processing box. But like, hey, if one buy this, and this is this is how Flash I end up this image. Yeah, I, I just realized it's like, oh, that's how I ended up maintaining a distribution. Oh, I remember that moment. I would go back and watch that. Um, to do something like that for audio processing, but I'd also like to make um, one of these Optiplexes that uh, you guys are on, mm-hmm. which are, you know, Optiplex 3010s, and see if I could shrink that down with like even more yeah. power efficiency. I think that's easily doable. Yeah. Easily doable, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it's it's just it's so nice to have more x86 chips on these single board computers in the space and in the size, because of you know be, because of issues with with heat with x86 chips. It's remarkable now that we can have have one this small, but it does it does have a large heat sink with a fan, mm-hmm. which is to cool down the. The Celeron, the memory, and we, the, we the need video to point card. Out it's got um, <laughs> Raspberry Pi compatible GPIO and Arduino. Oh yes, oh. yes, very cool. This this is yeah. something to just put yeah. together. It's like factor, you need it. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. Oh, and it comes with Bluetooth and uh, the Wi-Fi. Yeah, I agree with you. It's completely asking to be made. If you wanted to make like a psychotically overpowered router or NAS. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, one got, of the yeah. examples that they show is uh, PFSense. Mm-hmm. PFSense. So hardware yeah. firewall. <laughs> Open yeah. WRT PFSense. Done. Uh, and they yep. got, yeah, 218 for the 64 without starting at 188, man. That's eight gigs of uh, DDR4. That's actually not a bad price if you were, say, looking at the Latte Panda or the, what's mm-hmm. the, the rock one? Okay. Rock. Uh, Rock pie, rock, rock, rock chip something. Rock chip pie, yeah. Those, rock chip. And those are, you know, this is a really crazy powerful. Like, so what do you think about impulse by one eighty eight? Because I'm like, I don't know if I should buy one just yet. Maybe I'll give it a minute and let the ecosystem mature. And I'm like, you're just gonna make your own stuff for this anyway, then. I'm like, ah. <laughs> because then I start yeah. thinking about that case. Then I'm like, you know, if I could. 3D print, and it's like, I bet I know. Oh, I know somebody who's offered to 3D print me stuff. Oh, um, yeah, because then, then, then it's getting Firewire support on that in cart because you can stack that case. And it, this is perfect, then, because originally you wanted to use the Intel Nook, so th- this is great because it's uh, much more price uh, friendly. <laughs> Gotta get down to the performance. That is, and yeah, yeah. That it, it's something to play with. I hate it mm-hmm. for the price you can't beat a Raspberry Pi four, but it's for one hundred eighty eight dollars, yeah. mm-hmm. that's that's a delightful tinker toy. Yes, one hundred eighty eight <laughs> x eighty six. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the key one there. <laughs> so maybe you like to make delightful tinker toys, and you would like to tell us about your toy tinkering at tangent tirade of trouble. How could they do that? I nailed that one. I get a point. Yes, yes you, did. you can try uh, your hand at an alliteration with the letter T and uh, see if you do better than Ven. Uh, I probably wouldn't because I uh, fail. <laughs> I fail in English uh, at a fundamental level, mm-hmm. which is it. some things don't make sense in my head. But if you'd like to tell us what it is that in your head doesn't make sense or you'd like to provide some feedback, show us your tinker toys, your Raspberry Pi projects. 
that computer that you installed Linux on because uh, you heard us say something here, lib request, uh, <laughs> and decided to give it a shot, see how it went. Mm -hmm. Well, you can do that by going to linuxgamecast.com, hitting the contact button, and filling out the form. LWDW is the show that you uh, send your feedback to. It's relatively self-explanatory. You hit a button, it does the thing. Also, feel free to share spectacular adventures in failure. I always share those. <laughs> and it's always fun because people learn something. We do. Yes. Yes. Yep. Coming up first, this is from Nathan, man, because uh, we were talking about FTP and Firefox getting rid of support with FTP, you not know, following the steps of uh, Chrome and Chromium and all that. Mm -hmm. Nathan writes, he's like, yo, do people still use FTP? I've got an old copy of FileZilla gathering digital dust somewhere. I'm, I'm just going to go directly back to what I said during that episode. No mm -hmm. one uses or needs FTP right up until the point you do. And you're like, what? <laughs> oh, yes. ha. Huh. I got to do a thing with a thing. <laughs> yeah. Dang it. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, remember everyone, uh, your file managers on on Linux also allow you to do FTP. They're real popular ones like Nautilus and Dolphin. And I hadn't and used Thunar. them for that in a while. But yeah, and Thunar. So, but that that does work. But more important, Thunar. SFTP. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. That's yeah. the best way to do it. I mean, I have drives networked. Like that yeah. in my like hot link. I'm like boop, boop, boop. And mm -hmm. that's how we SSH. Yeah. That's called networking <laughs> in this house. Um Yeah. <laughs> dude, that's mm -hmm. a thing. Uh I don't know. I've never I don't have a copy of Final Zilla still installed, but I Oh, it's not installed. I I I do have the Tardot GZ in my external hard drive, just in case. <laughs> what is the what is it? WUFTP, the GTK one that looks like the old ancient version of that yes. Windows thing that's been around since the dawn of it days. Sure does. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that thing, you know, it's like the four, you know, the left and right arrows in the middle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess yeah, you, the classic. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can just use FTP from the command line. Hi, NVIDIA. Yeah. I've navigated your nightmares doing that trying to get a driver back in the day. I remember that. Mm -hmm. It was like etched in my brain. I'm like, ah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> um, we do have a question about Da Vinci. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you want to take this one? Joel? So then, uh, then I got it installed on Pop! OS using your method. Only issue I had was that exporting. naughty, doesn't it? <laughs> No, only issue I had was exporting. I would get no audio at all. The only way I could figure it out was export the video and audio separately, then combine all the audio into one file with Audacity, then finally put it all together with Caden Live and export there. Even if I can't ever get the audio to export, then I will continue to use Resolve on Linux with this workflow. It's a great editor and the color grading is so powerful thanks yeah yeah veldi you need to find another option because you're reducing quality by importing and exporting into into you know kaden live and uh yeah that's not good either <laughs> and we had i i found a lot of people that had this issue um on uh, reddit this issue he's describing a yeah. different issue yeah than the one that oh yeah you were saying mm -hmm. okay that was for playback, not export. Right. Um, mm -hmm. If you're going to do exporting, if you even, let's say this is your solution, um, export in a lossless uh, container, like a, a wave, put out a wave. You're not going to lose quality. You can move that around constantly, you know, and you're going to have the option to export uh, lossless with your video. You can do that in um, Blackmagic's little, what, what is it, uh, DNX HD? It's got mm -hmm. a lossless support for that. It's mm -hmm. going to up a lot of space. But what you might run into, you genuinely might with DaVinci Resolve, is, because this doesn't sound very intuitive, I have templates for the different shows and different things I do that are just set up, configured the way I need it. But if I need to like open up a new one just from scratch, by default, when you go to your audio tab in DaVinci, audio export's not highlighted. It's not, That checkbox is not ticked by default. So mm. yeah, yeah. Sometimes double check the, that. That's yeah. just how the default setting. That has no input from any user whatsoever. That's just how a new session will start. And that's how it does. Mm -hmm. But um, one option, well, the options is you're going to have to. You're on Linux. You're only going to be able to export um, PCM WAV files, linear PCM. 
we don't have an um, option to do, you know, AIFF or anything like that. So that's it. One thing I will throw in there, just on the topic, as somebody who's played the Da Vinci game to the point of like, I need to know everything I need to know about this program. Smartest thing I did was to get an Intensity Pro for my audio. Mm, yeah. Intensity Pros <laughs> are so cheap. People give them away in computers. <laughs> Yes, that's how I got one. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, all that is, the the Intensity Pro, there's the original version. That's all you need. There's the 4K version. I have one of each. Um, Because what it has is a breakout uh, spot, which... Yeah, I didn't get that. (laughs) Yeah. The cable, if you get it from Blackmagic, is like $150. There's a knockoff version, Uh which is the one I bought. That's seven. But... It'll give you the options for the left and right stereo pair audio that you can run out into a mixer and DaVinci can use that directly. Guess what? Blackmagic hardware works really good with Blackmagic software on Linux. And (laughs) um, that is perfect for your perfect sync and live audio tracking. Like I have a challenge in this mixer just for that when I'm doing editing. So good luck. Best of luck. And hey, man. I'm glad you found a workable solution, but yeah, uh, write me back. Let me know uh, what you come up with. Hmm? Yeah. Sounds good. Keep us updated. That is a thing. Um, And we have... uh, Nope. That's it. We got to get out of here. Jeez. No. All right. That is very much it. (laughs) Too bad. (laughs) But we'll be back um, next Wednesday. Come say hi. Watch us live or after the fact. Uh, Even if we're on YouTube, and you probably already know you're listening to this on audio, what we do there. All right. Credits. Let's roll up. (laughs) Yay! Do, do, do. Oh yeah, I I should say thanks to Odung for the follow earlier. <laughs> oh yes. Oh. Odung. And Marnet's <laughs> Marnet zero eight. <laughs> thank you for the follow, and thank you again to Libra Quest, our newest executive producer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Marnetto Await. That sounds like a nice way. Yeah, I know it does. <laughs> <laughs> I had to zoom in on it to be able to read that. <laughs> so, yeah, that's definitely zero in an eight. Thank you, all our Thank patrons, you, all you our made beautiful it in the last patrons. Minute. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't make pitch read right there. <laughs> yes. Thank you for the sub, Mir. See you next week. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>
circles. There you go. <laughs> Done. Aw. Thank you, Steve Husband. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> what what are we thinking, Steve, for? What did Steve do? <laughs> He's uh <laughs> congratulating us on the birth of another LWDW. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we had a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Then Jill's talking dirty on the live stream again. No! Because <laughs> uh, you're the one who does that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> Never mind. Never underestimate my ability to block other people out when I'm focusing on something. Yeah. Uh, that's my default state. I actually have to focus. If someone is talking to me, I have to focus on what they're saying because otherwise it's just. I can zone out selectively. I can like lean in here, like, yeah, well, I'm, I'm out <laughs> Okay, so that worked. I have a lot of. Hmm. Mm -hmm. hmm. Hi, Exalty. Step one is figuring out how to disable that plate on that ring. That's got to be an option. Ah. Uh, yeah. Nemo, oh, yeah, that Windows was a... will finally be able to open yeah. EXT4, huh? <laughs> yeah. Oh. I saw in, Finally, uh, we've been waiting for that one. <laughs> regular, regular, ordinary, boring Discord um, that we are hanging out in. Who was it? Who posted it? Uh... Stadia it is starting to roll out today uh, free. Mm -hmm. It was Linux Dura, I think. Uh, no, yeah. it wasn't. Or yeah. Arthur? Nope. Oh, Linux Dura said that uh, St uh, Stadia is not so bad. It was Admiral JT. It was Admiral JT. <laughs> oh, cool. Oh, I see. So go sign yeah. up for it that. Was. I'm going to sign up for it for science. Because I played it two years ago. And I was like, meh. Yeah. I mean, if it's free and they give you two months of uh, the trial content. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Did I get a manual? <laughs> Did you get just a teeny tiny little leaflet to say, go to this website to download it? Oh, no, that's an actual manual. No, All no, right. no, no. They, these are overlays. That, oh, okay. For like Logic, Cubase, <laughs> Reaper. All the DAWs that you can put over it. There's not one for a door, so it's utterly useless. Um. <laughs> oh, good Steve Husband. He just volunteered to help assemble medical masks. You know, Mattel has been... Oh, I guess I shouldn't have said where... No, everyone knows where he works. That's in the after show. Um, <laughs> yeah, so Mattel is uh, doing a good thing for the community, and they even have their... Oh, their... Um, uh, production house in Mexico producing them. So that's that's awesome. A lot of the um, like companies that have any kind of um, manufacturing manufacturing, yeah, yeah, in place is like, oh yeah, we can make masks like Razer, mm -hmm. and um, it was one of the uh, like laptop makers. It's like, yeah, no, we could totally just have one of the lines spit out masks instead of laptop bits. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's very good. Yeah, Mattel has uh, the most expensive 3D printers in the world, so it's it's a natural. <laughs> the problem Cody, is getting... don't worry. You two yeah. will be old one day. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Cody. <laughs> Aww. I always RTFM. On everything I buy. Because I'm somebody who has to hurry. answer other people's questions who don't. That's why. Yes, yes. exactly. <laughs> exactly. The same here. That's, it's, it's cold always... research. If I'm going to make a guide video, I need to know how to do this stuff. Well, mm. I need to know the right way to do it, and you also need to know the official way to do it. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> uh, press and hold down the encoder knob. Well, uh. you turn on the power button. Yeah, while well, you turn on the power, Behringer, you mean... The, remember how we've had this talk, Behringer, about you not putting power buttons on things? You forget sometimes, you forgot. 
It's yeah, the no, third d- third product from Behringer that I've owned without a power button. <laughs> you just plug it in. It's like, oh, okay, it's all right, cool. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, it's a 0. 0.5 millimeter barrel. I have genuinely yeah. <laughs> this showed up right before we went live because I have a couple of uh, rocker switches that you just plug both sides of those barrels in and on and off. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. I need to do Vin reading ASMR, but I don't read aloud. Oh, <laughs> no, you should read aloud. Yeah. You should, like, read the manual. <laughs> ASMR <laughs> manual reading. Mm-hmm. Vin, you should just do an <laughs> ASMR recording the ambient noise in your studio when it's all powered up without any, um, you know, filters or anything on the mic. Just, just... <laughs> And there. the uh, game. Maybe like Hang the Starship on. Enterprise. No, 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 no. Hang on. There. <laughs> Crank it. up the game. <laughs> yeah. It is. I mean, without all the noise gates. I just and, cut and... it off, Jill. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, it's a good mic. Yeah. You got good off axis. Very little off axis. <laughs> mm. As you were, kids. <laughs> then <laughs> we tried, Pedro, didn't we? I'm just hey, don't drag me into this. That was all you. <laughs> I'm giving the people what they ask for. They're unhappy with it. Gratitude. Uh, but yeah, no, I get what Jill was trying to say. Is, you know those videos where they just put like a dynamic mm-hmm. microphone somewhere and then crank up the gain and it picks up everything. Then they're doing it yeah. wrong. It'd be better suited yeah. to use a condenser mic for that. Condenser mic, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can hear it. No. <laughs> oh, yeah. If I if I can do set up proper gain staging on a microphone, then um, I probably shouldn't be here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too big for just the flipping noise. What? I did have a teeny tiny little book of things that had a very good, like page flipping sound that I could do like yeah, like that. <laughs> you but see- it's not here anymore. I can't hear you fumbling through the boots because I don't know, maybe because I have basic hand eye coordination and I'm not a bull in a china <laughs> shop. When you're a size of a bull, you tend to be a little more careful because you don't like buying stuff again. Especially in here, man. I can't stay in this room very long unless I'm like right here, like walking around, like nope, nope, nope. Too many things balanced on corners up in the air. Yeah, I know there's a good two inches from any anything that's on this desk. There's a good two inches from the edge. I could except clear... for the microphone arm that's clipped right on the edge. <laughs> if I extended both of these arms, I could probably clear about thirteen hundred dollars. Yeah. I'd have to check the. Uh, current market price for my work laptop and uh well i know how much the steam machine would cost me uh the steam box 360 um mm-hmm. yeah no that that <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be 1300 but i think i'd be close <laughs> hmm. i need to get a, a new mic arm for this this mic. <laughs> I have to constantly adjust it. Been quit uh, hitting this, it. I hope. <laughs> no, I'm I'm not touching it. It's just it's it's not strong. It, it this it's a little the mic's a little too heavy for it, so it just kind of starts to creep down. So I have to keep creaking up, tighten it, creep it up, tighten it. I've had Steve husband tighten it for me. I just need to get a better one, like the one you're using, Ben. <laughs> you just get a regular mic arm. They're about 15 yeah. bucks that are just <laughs> uh, Cody, I hope that the um, 
Well, the, the I consoles have consoles will yeah. have a better GPU than the Steambox 360 has in it currently, the 1650. Mm -hmm. I hope that they're selling consoles with a better GPU than that. <laughs> nope. <laughs> uh, because if not, oh boy. <laughs> that almost worked. Let's see. Yeah. My Amazon Basics mic arm isn't doing the job. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, you think that's bad? This mic arm is the cheaper version than the Amazon Basics. Oh, okay. Works, does it? <laughs> yep, it, it, it's a step down from the Amazon Basics one and still working. Yeah. <laughs> well, my the mic's a lot little... heavier. <laughs> yeah, the little uh, I mean, mount I mean, for the... Yeah. Yeah, the mount for the uh, mic itself, that I had to replace because the other one broke. And this one, it's blue because it was the cheapest at the time, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, that's a bit blurry. Yeah, this is literally th almost three times as heavy as my previous mic. So, it's just, because it's got the, I got the um, preamp in it. It's, oh, <laughs> it's need heavy. To, well, you need to get one without an arm on it. You just need to get one that's straight. Yeah, yeah. You know, just like a standard mic stand, like you were micing a guitar or something like that, you know, with the floor plate. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, I actually do have one. Yeah. So that's a, that, you know what, that's an idea. And you don't have to worry about, you know. Yeah, that's an idea, Ben, I didn't think of it, because I, down. yeah. No, that's what you were saying earlier. Mm -hmm. Cool. I don't have this thing for any other reason than I can get it out of my way. Yeah, well. Yep. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Which is a completely different argument than, but I want one that moves around and swings. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> because sometimes when I'm playing games, I rotate the mic to the side. Uh, do it. Pedro, could you side. rotate your own, please? Mm hmm. No, I mean the actual mic rotating it this this direction, um, so that it's on the side of me. You, uh, Pedro has side profile. This one isn't side profile. Oh, it isn't. So, but no, no. <laughs> and, oh, I thought it was what I suggested. <sighs> that would be the one to buy. It's not side profile. Oh, sarcasm. <laughs> yeah, it is. Right? <laughs> <laughs> <There's> like, <laughs> no, no. What I what I meant is literally rotating my mic you know this direction and then having it because i i've done that before when i played games just to test it yeah, that's why i so say stand because you rotate a stand by like you reach over and you move it there yeah it's a floor stand i like i said i mean yeah if you, if you want yeah. one that moves around cool that's awesome uh practicality wise like if you want something that's never going to droop on you floor stand yeah you can That's smack true. the snot out of that thing. And plus, it'll be great for home intruders. You can just pull the bar out. <laughs> Very true, man. <laughs> yeah, no, good idea. It is a good idea. I'm sure you get a halfway decent picture of this, but... It also helped me be able to see a little better. <laughs> so, it's been an issue. Oof. Yeah. You get used to it. <laughs> yeah. Staring through a pop filter. I know, I know, huh? Yeah, this one, you know, it takes up so much more real estate than my previous ones. Actually, I appreciate not having to pop filter in front of this uh, microphone anymore. I can the, actually see things. Yeah, it was yeah. the only way to get you close to a microphone. I mean, I'd rather have you join oh. a pop filter, but you were scared. <laughs> Pedro has a pop phobia, so he would only get about this close. <laughs> to his pop filter when he was talking. He was like, it. So I was like, yo, man, buy one of these. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I need to get, uh, they, they make ones for this particular mic because it's a little wider diameter. Hmm? So, um, yeah, uh, I was if you want one for that microphone, that. just get one for an AT2020 or a, uh, Heil PR30. Heil PR30. Okay. Same size. Mm -hmm. Well, when I say I had, it'll, it'll yeah. fit. Yeah. yeah I had foam. one that had the foam, yeah, fuzzy foam. Yeah. If I had ones from my previous mics, but Your the pop previous filter mics wasn't were it. tiny. Yeah, they were small, so that's yeah. it wouldn't fit this. 
and I could get a pink one. <laughs> <laughs> You're gone. Yeah. They're looking to make it Actually, really that's easy an to idea. key. I'll key it to... What's your least favorite color? <laughs> I like all colors. Great. <laughs> except... except... Except poop brown. No, no, that's great. If you like <laughs> all colors, I can just key it to black. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 oh yeah no it was interesting uh i was trying to set up the uh chroma key for the controller overlay for the dark soul stream oh, yeah. and it's like well i i can't do green because green is the color of the triangle i can't do um purple because purple uh reddish is the um well purple is square and red is uh, the hot pink uh, circle. Salmon. <laughs> uh, <laughs> blue is uh, X, and, well, black, the, the whole uh, controller, the way that the overlay shows it, it it's all black. So it's like, uh, I need a color that this doesn't have. Ooh, yellow. <laughs> nah, that'll do it. <laughs> so that is just, yeah, just key out yellow. Hey, it works. <laughs> No nice. invisible keys anymore. Thanks. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I gotta play around with this. And I really need to go to the grocery store. I just don't want to deal with idiots. Oh, yeah. IRL. Um, mm -hmm. I had to go to the office yesterday, so on the way back, I stopped at Tesco's. Mm. <laughs> mm. Yeah. I don't know. And it's like 99.9%, .9%, but there's going to be that one panicky D ass man. Mm, yeah. There's toilet paper now. That Like the, oh, yeah. the aisle is actually yeah. Yeah, yeah, the, packed. The, the, <laughs> it, it wasn't like a. There was no supply chain breakdown or anything. It's just everyone just panic bought it one time. It was like, yeah. don't mm -hmm. keep yeah. that much in the <laughs> chain. Now, give it a few minutes and it'll come back. We're still having TP issues here, <laughs> so uh, that hasn't really stopped. Adult diapers, man. Because, but I think also because we've Baby been wipes. They, adult diapers. Yeah. <laughs> there, there's, there's another trick you can do on Amazon to find TP. <laughs> A lot of people don't think about. <laughs> well, um, you know, if you're buying your TP online, you... <laughs> more power to you. Something's gone wrong at yeah. that point. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, because we couldn't find it in store, so. <laughs> but there, I we've been we last time Steve husband went is when he went early in the morning. He got some. Get some um, from TP from, Crom Costco. Oh, Tesco's here is doing like the NHS employee um, that only NHS people are allowed into the store at that time. Oh, nice! How are you taking advantage yeah. of that and exploiting it? Uh, not. Oh man! Because it, 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 it's between six a.m. and eight a.m. You're like, I work from home now. Those are not hours we yeah. recognize in Pedro, <laughs> Pakistan. I wake up. Okay, to be fair, I wake up at seven still, but I literally walk in here, turn on the um, work laptop, and mm -hmm. go do my thing. Then I come back. It's like work time. <laughs> Yay, work! Tap 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 tap. <laughs> it's like the cat with the headset on. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I spend about an hour, an hour and a half doing work, and then I sit on the service desk waiting for things to roll in, mm. playing video games. Yeah, well, seems logical. <laughs> it's like, well, to, to my credit, I don't play multiplayer games. I don't... Yeah, it's like I, can I do. <laughs> Need for Speed World. Oh, wow. Well, that barely counts. That barely counts. That's a dead game. Yeah, it was... Um, the servers were brought offline in 2015, so I'm playing by myself, so... Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah, right, speaking of DaVinci Resolve, I have to go uh, cut and This shouldn't be too difficult. Yeah. Shouldn't be And all. I need to go make dinner, because we haven't had dinner yet. Oh, this okay. Whole working, th that's what working from home is doing to me. We used to have this schedule already pretty lined up, where I would make dinner on Wednesdays mm -hmm. before the show. Yeah. Oh. Not That's anymore. <laughs> no. 
I don't know what I have. I think I have like cabbage and probably some sauce. I might have to MacGyver's. I might just drive my happy butt to the store. It's not like there's three places that are open 24 hours. I'm going to make some um, beef strips with mushrooms and uh, bechamel sauce. Right on. Steve, so, what kind of takeout are you guys having tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we have... oh. Uh, uh, from our wonderful Italian restaurant Cascardino's um, we have enough for lunch too uh, tortellini, emiliana um, antipesto salad and um, uh, chicken uh, was it chicken florentine or chicken, I'm, I'm forgetting the name of it but anyways the tortellini emiliana is really delicious it's pasta with Alfredo sauce, but it has mushrooms and peas in it. It's a really creamy sauce. They, they do a marvelous job with it. So that's what we're having for lunch. <laughs> oh, chicken piccata. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds legit. Yeah, it's actually really, really... It's one of our favorite... And because it w Steve wanted that, I you Damn know, it. yesterday... <laughs> well, no, I just well, read the this... back of this manual and it says, we hear you. And I misread it as we hate you. And I was like, yay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, also that's tracks. That's what that designer, that's what the designer who put that there. your stuff. Yeah. It was like, we hate you. I was like, oh. Yeah. I got mad when I reread it. I was like, damn it. Oh. Yeah. So we got the good food. Yeah. That was his birthday dinner that's what he wanted and what's nice is DoorDash and some of the other services uh, fortunately uh, all, our, all our local restaurants are delivering so mm -hmm. that worked out nicely but we what was nice with Scardino's is we were able to just call them directly and they they shifted some of their workers that are like normally bus boys and whatnot to delivery people <laughs> so it's poor guys yeah <laughs> 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 All right, beautiful people. We're gonna bounce out of here. Okay. Yes. Everybody. Love you. Love you Be guys. Be safe. Stay fantastic. Mm -hmm. Stay home. Okay. Yes. <laughs> if you can't stay, stay home, if you can't, you know, don't. Yeah. Don't walk by people. <laughs> that is not legal advice. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>